Welcome back to a couple things. Gosh, it's good to be here, don't you think? We had to change this. It's what? really confusing. What? The, the second, second cup? Second. You can do that live if you'd like to. Okay. Um, we are going to be talking today about our family reunion, and we wanted to do it now because it's fresh in our memories. We just got back from this, and it was an epic experience. So we want to tell you all about it, how we planned it, what we did, yeah. and what we would change in the future. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And let's see. As we as we transition the signs here in the background, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sean. Let me tell you a little bit of why we're here in our podcast studio <laughs> and what we've been doing uh, work-wise. So we've been doing a couple things. You want, you want help? We've been doing a couple things podcasts. We are now five years in to a couple things. There you go. Been doing a couple things for five years, having a blast with it. Uh, we have moved that show to just Sean and I sitting down talking uh, some nonsense, some good stuff. Yeah. Uh, we did a whole episode on postpartum, and we did a whole episode on grief and uh, traveling with three there kids. We've done a lot of different episodes, but uh, we then just recently launched a second podcast. That's yeah. our interview show called Second Cup, which you can see here with this sign. Both get filmed right here in the studio. <laughs> and honestly, we've been degenerates with our main channel, long form content. And that's okay because what we're realizing is we can't do it all. Have you realized that yet? I realized that a very long time ago. <laughs> Have you realized that yet? I, um, I'm just not realizing <coughs> it. And Excuse me. Thank goodness. We have... Dominique here that says, we're doing a great job. Great job, Sean. Thanks. Without further ado, though, I think we roll in to planning the family reunion. So let me give you a little background on this whole situation. I come from an epic family that I'm extremely grateful for, <laughs> okay? I'm just going to say that. That's not bragging. That's just me saying I'm proud of my family. Okay. For, oh my gosh, let's see, since 1960s, I want to say... Grandpa, my on my mom's side, started this tradition of getting everybody together on Labor Day weekend. And so it's happened in different areas, in different ways, with different activities, but it's happened. Okay. Um, the vast majority of the years since it first started in the 1960s. Uh, my grandpa passed the year we got married, 2016. Um, and I should say, my family on my father's side is also epic. It's smaller, so it, it feels like less than already of an ordeal to get everybody but it's together. Not small. It's not that small. I guess I have eight cousins on my dad's side, twelve cousins on my mom's side, and there seems to be more pomp and circumstance with that side of the family yeah. usually. So anyway, Grandpa died in tw- 2016, and. For the last 15, 20 years, his four kids have been planning the family reunion. We've been doing it on a farm, and it's a fantastic time. Yes. We ride tractors, and we do hay rides, and we ride horses, Yeah, and we do bonfires and fish in the pond. And uh, now that generation is all like 70 years old themselves. Yep. And it was kind of a year this year of passing the baton. Mm-hmm. Where now me and my 12 cousins, who are all in our 30s, had the responsibility of planning it because the generation above us has been doing it for so long. And they're like, if you want to, if you want to keep doing it, it's on you, which I respect. It's like, you got to kind of have that self motivation to do it. And so challenge accepted. Uh, I have some fantastically impressive cousins, shout out Tom and Lizzie and starting legitimately last year mm-hmm. after the the last labor day get together we started talking about what it would look like if we planned it so i have this group text pulled up here january 21st 2024 and this was when this was when the logistics really started so what how we did it was me tom and lizzie and then ultimately sean because she's way more responsible than i am uh kind of broke up the whole project of getting 60 people together. It's really 62 total. Yep. No, 63 total people, including future babies. Yes. And that includes 
four of my aunts and uncles, 13 of my generation, 30 of kids below us, and then all of those people's spouses. We tracking so far? Am I communicating this well? Yeah. Do we have any questions? Because we got Janet Johnson says, we'll Are be you answering, answering questions. questions. The answer to that is yes, Janet. And Zito Lover says, could not stay in a cabin with 60 family members. You're both very brave. That was honestly some of the biggest feedback, which is why we wanted to kind of talk about this, is people were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you would do that. I can't believe you all get along. But we did it. We so, all do get along. We all love each other so much. And I didn't really think about how rare that is. It's very rare. And I'm thankful for it. Um, so Tom, Lizzie, and I broke this big project of getting 60 people together and to committees. Yes. And the goal is to spend all of Labor Day weekend together and have activities planned throughout. So what our thought was is we had to choose a location. Mm-hmm. And we had to choose programming and then we had to figure out the family aspect of it, right? And so we called these committees the logistics committee, the activities committee, and the nostalgia committee so that we could like talk about what a rare thing it is that we come from such a wonderful family that gets along. And our thought was this. Most of my cousins and siblings live in central Indiana. Shout out Hoosiers. Um. And when we do something near where everybody lives, obviously it's convenient, Mm -hmm. is the pro. And so people are like really excited and it's easy for people to get there. We said, we're not going to do that though. We're going to choose a remote location so that everybody is forced to like be there and present and no one's going to- No one's able to leave. Take their kids to soccer practice or no one's driving back home at nights because they want to sleep in their own bed. It's like, no, we're all doing this together and Mm -hmm. it's like a jumping in the deep end commitment. So we started looking for cabins and that's not an easy task to find like, all right, do you get- We needed 20 plus bedrooms. Yeah, we needed like 20, 23 bedrooms. At and least. So, so do you get 20 hotel rooms? The no. bill on that is massive. And you'll never really be together. There's a couple places in in Indi- like southern Indiana, northern Kentucky uh, that have like these almost uh, compounds built out for purposes like this where teams or businesses or families will get together. But their individual cabins kind yeah. of spread out over uh, a lot. So... We didn't really like that idea. Also, with s- cribs and babies and such young kids, we didn't want them running in and t- in and out of like cabins and homes and kind of being all over a large property. Yeah, um, yeah, and there's some people are more wilderness oriented than others. Would you say you're an outdoorsy person yet? I am. <laughs> I just don't. I would just prefer to sleep inside a house yeah i get that we did we had a big summer though we went to we went to east tennessee in an rv which was a magical experience that that felt like something we're going to do more of shout out go rving um and would love to hear as we're talking what you guys did this summer and your thoughts already people are saying like zeta lover said just could not do this together Mm -hmm. as a family um tainted love said i would want anything by the water i get that you know it's really cool not to go on a tangent, but like, I get that when you say like you just couldn't do it. But that's something that is so beautiful about our family is for generations, they have worked so incredibly hard. I mean, worked to knit together a family that, though different, like, we might all have different political values or beliefs or like whatever. We all care so much about each other and keeping our family strongly connected and together is very, very important. Like that is a value of the family is I don't care what's happening in your life. I don't care if we see different, like different sides of something we are going to keep our family strong. Yeah. Your grandpa did a phenomenal job at that. G2, which is like the generation after them, 
has done a phenomenal job at that. And now G3 is, which is us, um, is seeing that importance of like having each other and staying closely knitted and closely intertwined and doing things like this. And it's just really special. And then to see now G4, which is like our children's generation. When she says G1, G2, G3, G4, it's generation one, which we call my grandma and grandpa. It's literally the lingo of the family. We're generation three, then generation four is below us. Yeah. Um, Now to see G4, like our children's generation, be so closely tied to their cousins and care so much about them and want to spend time with them is really, really special. And I agree. You could say, a lot of you can say, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't spend that much time with family, like whatever. Um, But you have to understand that this is a byproduct of a lot of work and a lot of time and generations worth of saying family is important and we're going to invest our time into it. And I'm curious your thoughts because you came from a smaller family. You're an only child. You're close with your cousins, but there's less of like the the structure of the family. I don't don't know how to describe it other than like, <clears throat> uh, hey, we're all going to get together and do this. It, it, it's like a real formal planned thing. What I'm appreciating is uh, you don't really know what you got till it's gone. And I think losing grandpa, losing my dad, like th- I, this is what I grew up with. So I'm conditioned to just like be used to this. And it is such an amazing thing that I don't want to take for granted. And so what I love is when a cousin's in a pinch like my my yeah. brother needed a call. He needed some counsel. And so he called my cousin. Mm-hmm. And anytime anyone in the family needs something, they call on the family member first. And that's what I grew up with. So I'm, I'm like conditioned to it and, and a little uh, insensitive to it. But I'm trying to like realize that that's not normal. I will also say too, it's not normal. It's not something that I grew up having either. But having even married into it and understanding like the closeness of the family to give you an example, in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. in Paris, France, when we woke up and Jet couldn't breathe because he had severe croup, the first person I called was one of our cousins. Shout out Liz. Who happens to be like an ER nurse. And she got back to us immediately. She, even though she was, answered. Yeah. She was like at a banquet here in the U.S. And she's like, what's up? And I was like, I have a question for you. She's like, I got you. What's up? Here's what I think is cool, though. Um, the Bible talks about like kind of generational curses. Mm-hmm. And I think if, if generational curses are a real thing, so are generational blessings. Yeah. And you look at like the New Testament opens up with genealogy. 8% of the whole Bible is genealogy. So like where you come from matters. I guess I'm kind of getting to the old guy phase of my life where I'm doing Ancestry.com, digging into all this stuff. We'll talk about the nostalgia crew and all the stuff that I pulled together for our family reunion in a little bit. But anyway, it gets me pumped. And Mm -hmm. I will say I've been a little challenged recently about being present with each other Mm -hmm. does make a difference. And like the quantity of time does matter. And we have allowed ourselves to love this life we've built here in Nashville, which we do love this place. Um, It's difficult knowing that all of this family is in Indiana. So it's like, we love it here. And anyway, that's just a thought. I will say, though, general consensus has been, which has been a lot of our conversation with, like, proximity. You can live next door to someone and not see them yeah. and not be intentional with them. So we've been trying to be more intentional with the time that we get. Um, someone did say it could be fun um, sharing time together, catching up. Not to like jump forward to the nostalgia, but it was cool. We did spend time um, because there are so many of us. It's hard to like, and we are all very busy in life in different phases. It's hard to know what everyone's going through and what is new. And we spent a big chunk of time one day doing a catch-up session. It was in the theater at this house, hotel, place. And one by one, each couple would come up and give a spiel five, five, ten minutes of like, what has been going on this past year, something we can be like helpful with. Yeah. Something that we can help them with, something we can pray for what's coming up in the future, something they're excited about, something like a high, almost like the high, low Buffalo type situation. Thank you for that comment, Angela. And last thing on just on my general thought of family where this is like an election year, a lot of politics usually gets contentious at times. 
Um, but I think that we are obligated to give our family the benefit of the doubt and to look for similarities with each other as family rather than differences. Yeah. Everyone else, you're trying to point pretty much, and like people do this, hey, you're different than me because of that, or I don't want to see eye to eye on that. It's like, no, no, no. We need to look for the things that pull us together rather than mm-hmm. the things that, that pull us apart. Um, so, a couple of questions. Yes. How often do we do this? So the big family, this was our first year doing like a go away somewhere in travel. We usually do a family reunion every single year, um, but we are all together as a full family at least four times a year. We do 4th of July is a big thing. Last year we did a summer Olympics, which is fantastic. We do a kids summer camp, um, which is like a week long for all of the generation four, which is our kids generation. My brother guy just started organizing that. We'll probably interview him uh, just so that we could share that. Cause that was a huge win. He needs to be on second cup anyways. I agree. Oh yeah. yeah Cause he introduced us. Yeah. Shout out guy. And he is a elite athlete. Yeah. <laughs> that thing that you forget about. Yeah. Um, But yeah, we see each other probably at least four times a year. The whole family. Easter, we see each other too. Yeah. Everyone. Christmas. Yeah. Thanksgiving. So it's probably five times. At least. Um, Yeah. And then someone said, thank you, Sean. I'm now yawning. I don't know what it is about this studio. (laughs) I think it's because I finally can relax and not be like super overstimulated that I just... Literally, I think I've yawned 20 times since we've oh, been Oh, shoot. Here. I've been slacking on my job of switching cameras, babe. My gosh. Babe. We love this studio and are very grateful to have it. By the way, on our interview show, Second Cup, tomorrow we're interviewing and releasing the interview we did with Cost and Mayer. Mm-hmm. Shout out Austin and, Ma- and Meredith. I had a blast with them. Um, back to the logistics of this, though. Before we do that, can we jump into some questions? Because we have a lot of questions circulating there's a lot You're of things about going the questions. on. I love it. I love um, it. Everyone needs to know our thoughts on the Dancing with the Stars lineup that was just announced this morning. It is top of the news. Okay, hit me. Um, I am absolutely obsessed with Iona Mar. Iona Mar. Yeah. Um, and everyone says we need to get her on the podcast. Yes, she needs to win Dancing with the Stars. Either her or Steven has to win Dancing with the Stars. So if you're watching this, I need you to vote. I need you to do everything for these two because they need to be the top two and one of them needs to win. Who else are you excited about? Um, Steven. Steven. Pommel horse Steve. Who, can I go on a tangent about this guy? To, I have to go on a quick tangent about Iona and Steve because okay. they are, for them to be two massive icons in the world right now, I think is the coolest thing in our culture at the moment because Steven... He is, people are calling him like Clark Kent. So within men's gymnastics, men's gymnastics has had a hard time um, gaining attention like women's gymnastics. So right now to have a men's gymnast be an icon of world culture, one is like so incredibly cool for the sport. And two, to have him be him, glasses rubik's cube just like embracing his nerdy qualities and like being so popular for it i think changes the lives of millions of kids in the next generation and that makes me so happy as a parent big fans of steven and then iona just like women's empowerment body image strength changes the lives of generations to come with little girls and she rocks it Everything she stands for is so cool. We got a lot of comments about Sean being on another season of Dancing with the Stars. Are they doing another All Star season? I have no idea where that. But a came lot, from. Of, a lot of people were asking us. But that. Steven and Iona, I will be in. We will be in the audience for you two at some point this season. Can't wait. Multiple. Times. Any other questions you want to address? Oh, sorry. Because you're, you're excited time. about this. Um, whatever happened to the content house? People want to know. Things changed. Um, we were really excited about it, but uh, I don't know if you've kept your finger on content houses recently. They haven't really worked out that well. So no. uh, it's important to pivot, and we did. So, yeah. <laughs> um, And last thing kind of ties into 
the reunion. How do you promote independence with your kids while still keeping them safe? There's uh, I need to look into this before I really start touting it. But like this concept of free range parenting, you know, <laughs> is we establish hard boundaries of whatever it is. Like you can ride your bike here or you can do this on the playset, And we like try to it requires a good bit of thoughtfulness and awareness and just like establish the boundaries. And then we kind of let them use that as a sandbox to do a lot of w- whatever they want in it. Yeah. Um, safely. So we're we're like supervising them, but I think I have a tendency to probably be like ultra hands on and want to be just like in the nitty gritty. This has helped me figure out a system to like let them navigate their own way a little bit more. Or even like we have a gated yard, and I want them to be able to have the freedom to like go outside and play. But we also creepishly have cameras everywhere outside, so we can watch them at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, but if you have ideas or suggestions, please let us know. Um, okay, back to the family reunion logistics. We started doing calls for this uh, frequently. It was like kind of a standing weekly call that we would do after the kids go down, and we had to do kind of curating potential cabin spots and mm-hmm. location spots. So the first vote we sent out to all of my twelve cousins was. Are you good with uh, a four hour drive? Are you good with an eight hour drive? And we let people vote. And then we understood that people were willing to make the drive. Uh, and we just did majority rules on that. Um, it also helped us start to communicate and build excitement for the trip in itself. This was back in like January. Yeah, we sent out a lot of polls like what weekend would work, um, what vibe, what location. So we ended up doing like Charleston. Pigeon Forge, Indiana, uh, Indianapolis. And Kentucky. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And then once we chose the location, we rallied everybody to see, hey, can you clear this weekend and make sure you can make it? They said yes. We did, which was super exciting. Again, this is why you had to plan it so far out because with this many people, inevitably someone usually has something booked within like three to six months. So yeah. we had to plan it nine months ahead. Also, Tainted Love is saying you needed a planning committee for 60. We had one, we which did. was three assigned generation three kids, which yeah. is like our generation, to do everything. Yeah. And then we reserved the spot. And at that point, it's like all bets are off. It got serious. And at that point, we got the floor plan for the cabin. And there was 21 rooms with a pretty epic kitchen that had like these dual islands it had this awesome communal space that everyone could gather in. And what we did was we got the floor plan for the cabin and just assigned rooms to the to the families and told people where they were staying so that there wasn't like a pick and choose or people felt like they got the short and the stick. It was just like, this is what we thought would be most logical and communicated that to the family. Yes. So with the activities, we wanted to have enough scheduled that it was uh, like structured, but not not too much that it was like hour by hour and people were overwhelmed and fatigued with all the, all the activities. So we had, on Friday, we played card games uh, with the adults after the kids went down because people were kind of rolling into town. Um, we had a ton of arts and crafts just constantly out for the kids at all times of the day. Which was awesome. Uh, we had on Saturday, uh, family Olympics. So that concluded or included drawing a picture in three different teams. Do we have three or four, four teams. We divided up in the four teams. Everyone got a wristband. We drew a picture and we all voted on which picture was the best. We did tug of war, which is hilarious. We did like a, who can go the fastest relay race with a beach ball between your belly. The teams that we had selected, though, we kind of split up all siblings, all families, all spouses, and put them on four teams for the entire weekend. We ordered wristbands of different four different colors, and you wore your wristband all all weekend. So when it came to, like, cleanup crews, um, who was on dish duty, who, whatever it was, it was all based off of, colors and it had the equal amount of generation two three and four people on each team 
Yeah, we tried to divvy it up so that you weren't just with your siblings or your immediate cousins. It was a nice mix. And I think Tom did a great job at being thoughtful with that. Um, there was also less BB gun shooting with that yeah. and a bunch of ridiculousness. On Saturday night, we did... Was that family movie night? Oh, no, that was the skit night, the game night that Jacob put on. And it was like this game show that was hilarious, and the kids were part of that. It was probably like a half hour, 45 minutes. Sunday morning, we did family church, which was like a quick uh, message from Blair, who did a great job. It was fun, too, when we were delegating all of these different roles for like the nostalgia team, um, logistics, food. Whoever was in charge of that could then delegate it out to the family and say, like, Jacob or whoever you were, I'd like if you did this one night at this time. But it was there was always, like, a head that was kind of yeah. delegating the roles. We didn't want too many chefs in the kitchen, so we just said, this person's in charge of that. If you, if you want something, talk to them about it. Um, so Sunday we did the church. Sunday afternoon we did, uh, let's see, pool Olympics, mm -hmm. which was funny. We did, like, watermelon water polo. And uh, that was like crafts too. And so it was like, I think the perfect amount of programming, you could tell that by the third day, people were starting to get like fatigued and want to just like veg out on the couch yeah. a little bit. But I thought it was the perfect amount of time, just kind of filling it with activities and food and space to kind of like talk and hang. Yeah. It was a wonderful retreat. And it was really like Friday afternoon to Monday morning. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, the last part of it, is I was on nostalgia committee. And so what the really fun project for me was, was to like try to figure out how do we talk about why our family is special throughout the weekend in, in different ways. So we had different drawings around the house, like Sean said, and one of them was like this big tarp that was like Palmer family reunion and all the kids were coloring it in. Mm -hmm. And it just like kind of subconsciously it's home. They're like, this is the Palmer family. We're mm -hmm. a part of it. Uh, we did interviews with one person from my generation with my aunt and uncle. Uh, one person from my generation sat down with each of my aunt and uncles and sat and interviewed them for an hour just about my grandma and grandpa, how they were raised, memories from their early life, just to pull out these stories. Uh, we also did a big, we printed out a big family tree so that everyone knew everybody's name, everybody knew whose kid was who, everybody knew kind of like birthdays and it, it kind of is a conversation yeah. starter we have new people who have married into the family yeah. and it's just our family has grown so fast that we wanted that kind of like education for everyone you also did a wonderful night where we went into the theater and got to watch like a compilation of the past couple of years of events we've done as a family and it was really fun to watch the kids get excited and say oh i remember fishing with everyone or oh i remember palmer camp or whatever it was yeah uh We've talked about this before, but my grandpa was big into capturing things with video. My dad was. And what we do, I think, on a day-to-day -day basis with podcasts and YouTube videos is just an extension of that, like a modern-day application of that. But it's cool to, like, not only record all these clips from the family gatherings, but make them something that is shareable and can be watched in the future, which is why I love YouTube, separate topic. But it does feel like when, when you're able to sit and reflect on – the Palmer family summer camp and watch that together while we're at the Palmer reunion. Um, it feels like momentum is building, which is really cool. And it kind of, it kind of just like captures that moment in a special way. So we did that. We did the sharing thing like Sean talked about where everyone from each family share something. I think that's an important part of things. And we also gathered all my dad's home videos, old home videos from all of these past decades worth of Palmer family reunions and just made this four hour long YouTube video that we had on loop in the background in the living room of where we were staying. And one of my favorite moments was sitting down with one of my uncles and him just watching this and like riffing off all these old memories that like he probably hadn't thought of in years because he was watching these old clips. He's like, Oh my gosh, that's that old 1937 car we had, or that's that, that's that old neighbor we used to spend all that time with. And Oh my gosh, there's, your mom and whatever, like she was very good at volleyball and all these different things. It like curated and, and pulled out a ton of these stories that I just found. I don't even know why I like it. I just find it special and captivating. And it's like, 
those stories could have just died with that generation, but now, now they kind of live on in a special way. I do feel passionate about this because a couple of different reasons. One, I feel grateful, but two, there's like all these studies that say, if you know about your family history, then you're set up for success in a bunch of different ways. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do and set our kids up for passing the baton onto them. And that takes intentionality that I've not really been used to until this weekend. I, I will say, I feel like the cabin was a perfect pick. It was so special to have everyone together under the same roof and, and roof and have all these kind of unintentional collisions happen with each other. So like you wake up and you're the first one up and oh, there's, there's, uh, my aunt who's sitting in the kitchen too, cause she woke up early and now you have like this little conversation that otherwise wouldn't happen. They had a movie theater in there that was great for the kids to watch movies, but also for us to do family meetings. They had an arcade that was fun for the kids. They had an indoor pool, which was great because it rained. They had the big family room, an epic kitchen. Sean ordered all these groceries from Walmart. Shout out Walmart pickup. That was clutch. We literally, what they say? It was the second biggest delivery. Yeah. Second biggest order that they've had yet. <laughs> we got <clears throat> how many eggs? Almost 300 eggs. 300 eggs. We got like 10 things of salsa, 12 bags of chips. A lot of food. A lot of food. And that was only for breakfast and snacks because we catered in lunch and dinners. But it was amazing. It was really fun. And all of my cousins impressed me with their diligence, their organization, their playfulness. I really value that in our family. And I hope we can keep this going. So I'm trying to think, are we missing anything? Oh, would we do it again? Absolutely. I would do it every year. Me too. Yeah. I think <laughs> our family has settled on we'll do it every other year because it is such a, not an imposition, but like trying to travel that far and get everyone's schedules and take time off from work when we're already doing a week of summer camps and stuff makes sense. But I would do it every year. And we all get along. And I think that's a, a partial blessing. And I th also think that's partial practice of being present with each other, practicing respect. I think we've been beneficiaries of people ahead of us having modeled that for us. And we're going to try to keep that going. So that's all I have. We did a debrief call last night with my cousins to try to like get all the feedback together and set us up more for success in the future. But all in all, it was a home run. It was ridiculous, hilarious, and amazing, precious all at the same time. Thank you for being a part of it, babe. Absolutely. Thank you for being a part of the family. Thank you for letting me. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, it was a blast, and I do feel passionate about this stuff. So see you next time. I'm Andrew. I'm Sean.